Welcome to Your Cyber Path, the podcast that helps you get your dream cybersecurity job by sharing the secrets of experienced hiring managers and top cybersecurity professionals with you. Now, on to the show. So now what I want to do is I want to really get into uh, the essence of, of this episode, which is to talk about using a particular tool to to automate some of this work because there's a lot to do here. And when we were doing pre-show prep, uh, Rebecca was 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 saying to me, you know, Kip, uh, this tool called Emas, it probably doesn't automate as as much as people might think, which is kind of surprising to me. I haven't used Emas, but uh, Rebecca, I was hoping you could kind of unpack that a little bit and tell people, you know, what does that mean? Yeah, so Emas does uh, definitely support the framework in walking through the actual RMF process. Um, and you can do things like when you put your system into EMS, um, once you have a hardware list and a software list and you do your Nessus vulnerability scanners, you do your security technical implementation guide or your stick checklist, you can import that data into EMAS and then it will correlate those findings. So let's say that you run an ACAS scan and there is a vulnerability associated with the software um, or a piece of hardware. Uh, it will associate that security control with that piece of software um, as a non-compliant item. Mm. Um, but it's not going to actually do things like write all of your security documentation for you on how you do identity and authentic identification and authentication. You've actually got to do that work to put it into EMAS. I see. Okay, so maybe maybe EMAS would be better characterized as just like a data store and just a way to organize yourself. Do you think that's a more accurate description of what it does? Yeah, it does definitely keep um, all of your data, all of your system identification information. Like you're, you do security categorization in there. So when we're talking step one, preparing. That's when we build our system in EMAS. Um, when we start to move it, or step zero, prepare, step one. Um, we start to look at actually getting our team together. That's when we assign all of the individuals EMAS. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we, you know, add things like our system name, start looking at how, you know, what version are we working on? What network is it going on? Um, and then when we move into that categorization phase, EMAS does a very good job of helping us categorize our system and based on the NIST special location 860 volume two, and then select our security controls from there. Okay. Okay. So EMAS is helpful, I guess, is my takeaway from this part of our conversation. Um, and so it's worth us, you know, spending some more time on the episode now to, you know, kind of understand it a little bit better. And I suppose I should probably stop at this point and tell people that EMAS <clears throat> is an acronym and it actually stands for Enterprise Mission Assurance Support Service. 